So with the database in place, we are now ready to start working on our API. And since this is an MVC application, all the calls to our API will be routed through controllers. So let's create a class in the controllers. We already have controllers folder. If you don't, just create controllers folder in your project. And I'm going to add a class and I'll call it bands controller. Now right now it's just a class in order to make it controller it needs to inherit from controllers. However, we are not going to be using views. This is an API so we will be doing all our work or testing in Postman. So we don't need to inherit from controllers. Instead, we can inherit from controller base because we simply don't need all the functionality that controllers class gives us. So we're going to inherit from controllers base. And we need to bring in the namespace, which is in the ASP.NET Core.MVC. So all our calls to the API or all the queries are in the repository. So we need to bring in the repository into this controller. And we'll do it by injecting it into our constructor. So let's create a private variable. It's going to be read only. And it's going to be of type that is our interface. So that's I band album repository. So let's bring in the namespace and our interface is in services folder. And I'll just call it underscore because it's a private variable band album repository. So now we need to bring in the repository itself and assign it to this variable. So let's create a constructor and we will inject the iBand album repository to it and I'll just call it band album repository. And I'm going to assign it to our private variable underscore band album repository. And this would work. However, it's a good practice to double check that the band album repository is not null because if it is, we need to throw an exception because obviously we cannot do any API calls. So we'll do the null check, which is the two question marks. And if it is null, we'll throw an exception. Otherwise, we'll assign it to our band album repository variable. So we'll throw a new argument null exception, just like we did before. And the exception will be coming from the band album repository. So with the repository ready and available in the controller, we can now start creating our API calls. So let's create the first one and let's just get all the bands. So let's create an I action result and I'll call it get bands. And it doesn't take any arguments. We simply want to get all the bands in our database. So we're going to query our repository. We already have the methods there and the one we want is get bands. So we will assign the result of that query to a variable. So I'll create a variable called bands from repo since we are querying a repository. And we'll go to our repository. So that's the band album repository dot. And here are all the methods available to us. And the one I want is get bands. So it will query the database, get all the bands and assign it to bands from repo variable. And now we can simply return the result. So we will return a new JSON result. And the result we are returning is of course the bands from repo and that will be converted to a JSON. So this is our action result for get bands. Now there's one thing that is very common to do for the controllers when we are working with APIs and that is to make it an API controller. Currently it's just a controller but with API controller will gain new functionality.
It is not necessary, but it allows the API to use related functionality such as the error messaging, for example. So let's do that and I will designate this controller as API controller. And that will make our life a little easier down the road. Right now it wouldn't matter so much, but with some of the other actions that we will be creating, this will actually help us quite a bit. So even though we now have the controller set up as API controller, this is still just an I action result. It's not a really an API call. And that's because we need to set up an attribute that will route the URI request to this action. And to do that, we'll use the HTTP get attribute because this is an HTTP get method. And here we will assign the attribute for the routing. And it's common for the APIs to start the routing with the API and then slash and then the name of uh, the route that you want. And in this case we are getting bands so we can have API slash bands. So let's test this. Now when we test it we are going to use the local host and remember when I right click on the project and go to properties in our debug, we set up the local host, in my case, as 65000. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to open the postman and place it here using the get request. Now, in order for us to be able to actually get any results from our application, we need to first, of course, run the application. So let's run it. And we have it set up so it doesn't open in the browser because we are going to be using the postman to get all our requests. So in our localhost 6500, I use the slash, then API, and slash bands. And that should give us all the bands. And here are the bands. We get 200 OK status, and down here we have the bands. We have the ID, name, founded, and genre. So our API call worked. However, I want to make a little change here. Since this is a bands controller, every request from this controller will go through API slash bands and then there will be slash and for example an ID or search query or whatever the user wants. However, they will all have the localhost slash API slash bands first. So instead of copying this to each of the actions, we can use the route straight on our controller. So up here under the API controller, I'm going to create a route for this whole controller that will go to API slash bands. And then I don't need to use it here. So now I will just use the HTTP get to mark this as HTTP GET method. It's not actually necessary. If you omit HTTP GET, if I just deleted it, then the API would know that this is an HTTP GET by default. But I like to have it there explicitly. So let's run it one more time and go to our postman. And I'm going to send this request again. And we should get exactly the same result. And you can see we still get 200 OK status and the result is the same because all we changed was to designate the route on the controller level rather than on the action level. All right, so this was our first API call. And next, let's create an action that will return a single band.